Hello everyone, uh, my name is Diego Alfonso and I'm one of your hosts of the Florida Aviation Network. We are broadcasting in the clear from the Aerospace Discovery section at the Florida Air Museum located at the Sonafon Complex in Lakeland, Florida, celebrating the 41st annual Sun and Fun Fly-In and Exposition. Our guest today is Flight Lieutenant John Wolgamuth. He's in the Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve and he's representing 27 cadets that have visited us uh, during Sun and Fun. I would like to introduce you now Lieutenant John Wolgamoff. John, Hello, welcome Diego. to the program. Thank you very much. John, uh, you know, we've done this before. We and, have indeed. And, uh, I know uh, uh, you fellows uh, are coming to Sun and Fun almost now on a yearly basis. Very much so. Yep. And of course, we're very happy with that. And uh, But you know, there are still some people, uh, and pilots even in, in our country, that really uh, don't know, although we have a version so far of, uh, of what you fellows do in, uh, in England, uh, could you please tell us a little bit uh, about what you do, what does the reserve really mean uh, uh, over there, and what does it mean to uh, the young cadets? Okay. Which, by the way, I would like to uh, introduce Samantha and Anthony. And don't think you're going to get away. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to you guys. Um, so, John, go ahead, go ahead and give us a little history about the, um, uh, the, the volunteer program for the cadets in, in, in the UK. Okay. Uh, we're part of the Air Training Corps, or the Royal Air Force Air Cadets. Uh, basically, been bringing cadets over here for the last 20 years. Uh, the cadets are p part of uh, the Royal Air Force Youth Program. There's 922 squadrons back in the UK, and the cadets who come to Sun and Fun are part of the London and South East region cadets. So they come from London and the home counties. I'm from uh, the county of Kent, so my squadron is in Kent County, and that's the uh, county that started this uh, trip to Sun and Fun on a yearly basis. Uh, the cadets range from 13 up to their 20th birthday. Um, they can join the Royal Air Force if they want to, but there's no, um, not compulsory, but the skills they learn as a cadet, they obviously aid them obviously joining our Royal Air Force or uh, a career in the aviation industry. Uh, why we come here is to try and develop that interest in aviation. I can't really think of anywhere better than Sun and Fun, uh, especially on the practical side and actually viewing and touching, you know. Um, it's a great experience for the cadets, uh, culturally, educational, you know, it gets this camp over here embraces so much and we do so well and also that Sun and Fun do so much to make us feel welcome as well. Uh, we have our own campsite here that's permanently here to sort of aid the camp, you know, it makes it much easier when we turn up. We don't have to start from scratch every year. Right. So that really does and help. it's right here at the compound? It's right here in the volunteers campsite. Okay. So we're right in the middle of all the volunteers, next to the early birds. Uh, you know, every day people come in and come in to talk to us about, you know, welcoming us back. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great experience. Uh, so I've got two of my cadets from my camp this year with me today. So they'll probably tell you a little bit more about their history. Uh, but I was a cadet many moons ago, went on various camps, got a great interest in aviation, had my first flight with the program uh, in a chipmunk. Yep, uh, familiar also, with that. Yeah, uh, gliding as well. So we've got a gliding program, so when the cadets are 16, uh, they can do a gliding scholarship and go solo. Um, if they do well with that, there's also a program to give the cadets 12 hours of flying in a powered aircraft. So that's available to them too. And there's various scholarships, um, Royal Air Force Association uh, and the Guild of Pilots do scholarships that the cadets can apply for and many of them do gain sort of uh, their pilot's licenses through such uh, schemes. Right. So there is aviation over there, 
probably not quite as uh, available to them as the cadets that come to the Central Florida Aviation Academy, Correct. which is a fantastic program. But there is aviation available in the UK, which is uh, pretty neat. That's cool. Now, when was the um, the program uh, first started? When was the oh, uh, back in the UK or here? In the UK. In the UK. Um, the original program started in 1938, which was the Air Defence Cadet Corps, and in 1941 that turned into the Air Training Corps. And the obviously with the dates, it was the primary purpose was to give young airmen uh, knowledge or cadets more knowledge about aviation, how it all works, engineering, flying training to prepare them for basically the uh, World War Two. Exactly. Now um, I want to talk to Samantha here for a minute. Samantha, um, tell us what are you? What is your role right now as a volunteer uh, with the cadets? Well, at this Sun yeah, front. at this time. Yeah, here is on the front. Oh, um, this morning I was doing the general parking for the aircraft, so I was standing on the corner, marshalling the train, um, the cars coming in, well, not cars, planes coming in, and it was just, yeah, just that was mainly it. Okay. And what is your goal? Um, I guess your goal, uh, your main goal is uh, aviation oriented at some point or? Not really. No? I joined the cadets because it was something to do and it was more of a, like a social thing and I've got like loads more friends around London and stuff like that because I like planes but I'm not that interested <laughs> in like, the inside of it which is alright but yeah. But you, uh, you're not afraid of flying? No, I love flying. No. Flying's amazing. Because most people are afraid of flying. Really, they're afraid of crashing. That, that's what's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Anthony, now we were talking before, and um, uh, I know that um, you're in the flight program. Yes, gliding. Uh, yeah. And um, that you have done some flying in gliders, I understand. Okay. Yes. Now, what was the, your motivation to join the cadets? Um, I sort of have a goal at the end of my cadet career to join the military service in the RAF and I thought the best way would be to join the air cadets and get a bit more experience through what they do and sort of build up my life skills. Exactly. Now I understand that you have some experience in gliders. Yes. And we were talking about that and, um, and I really think, you know, we were talking and I just want to let our, our audience and uh, viewers and listeners um, uh, about this and, and I think that learning to fly a glider is is really a much better proposition that yeah. let me let me change that what I'm trying to say is that if you're a glider pilot how come glider pilots always land without engines without problem <laughs> and for power pilots when we lose the engine it's like we you know freak out so Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think it, it has to do with the fact that we don't practice it enough, you know? Yeah. And uh, when you're a glider pilot, you have that extra ability to determine your energy management and all that good stuff yeah. that power, you know, uh, power pilots uh, don't, uh, don't have. Now, what is your role right now here at Sun and Fun? Uh, my role right now is, again, marshalling the planes and sort of parking up. Today I've been at the camping. So getting all the uh, aircraft ready for camping in a few days, and also in Santa Fun, I'm a flight commander, sort of in charge of a few cadets, make sure they're okay, ready for the days ahead, and getting everything uh, ready for the staff as well. Okay. So I understand this unit is from Kent County, correct? Well, we're from everywhere. So I'm okay. from Essex County. Okay. And the boss is from Kent, and I don't actually know where Samantha is from. Okay. Sorry. And uh, the, uh, I guess. Um, this question is to you. Your um, your main uh, the, the headquarters for the uh, for the volunteers because uh, I understand they have they have these programs in different counties. The camp, as it stands at the moment, is administrative administrated in Kent Wing, which is okay, basically that's in what the I county of Kent. Okay, and uh, it's open to all the cadets in London what we call London and the South East region, which is basically London and the home counties. Correct. So all the other counties, so Essex, Middlesex, yep. Surrey, Sussex, Kent, so all the counties around there, the cadets are all welcome to uh, come along to this camp. Those are closer to the Isle of Wight, I think, further down south? Or? Yeah, nearly. Hampshire's sort of down by the Isle of Wight, but okay. it's getting that way, so okay. Sussex is probably Because I know enough. the yes. Isle of Wight is south of London. Yes, yes. 
Oh, you say southeast, so that's a little bit. Yes, more south. Okay, yes. More, more, more to the front. Now, um, I also understand that, um, and, and a lot of our audience uh, probably doesn't know this, uh, one of the things that you do every year that you come here, you have a, even though Son of Phone is a special purpose, but you have another purpose that is really, really, really special, yes. and that is to visit uh, Arcadia. Arcadia. And uh, could you please uh, fill indeed. us in on, yes. on, on those details? Well, as I was saying, the Air Training Corps uh, in its entirety was uh, started in 1941, basically with the idea of training up uh, the young airmen, or basically before they join the service, so a program for people probably before the age of signing up to teach them about aviation and flying. Obviously, when they joined the Royal Air Force, um, England was definitely not a safe place to fly. The Luftwaffe could come across the channel, and it did, and obviously to take out the training airfields and take out the fledgling pilots with no skills, they were sitting ducks. The Luftwaffe were um, very highly skilled, yep. and uh, new pilots were just an easy target for them. So the life expectancy was very short. Um, the Royal Air Force training establishment needed to sort something out that uh, gave them better protection, and um, they come up with a, an idea between ourselves and the US government that they'd actually use some of the training uh, facilities over here to train the Royal Air Force cadets, as they were called then, uh, to basically learn how to fly, elementary flying training. So um, there was two airfields in particular down towards Arcadia. There was a uh, Riddle Field, and I think it was, um, I'm trying to think of the other name of the other field, Karlstrom, I think, field. Okay. But anyway, down towards Arcadia, and um, yeah, they trained thousands of RAF cadets and taught them to fly, you know, I think US aircraft, yep. training aircraft, and then once they were fully trained, sent them back home. Unfortunately, not everybody went home. So in a small uh, lot in Oak Ridge Cemetery, Arcadia, there was a Commonwealth war grave. Uh, there was 23 British airmen buried in that plot from the two schools. Most of them were not aircraft related accidents. There was car accidents, there was fever, there was all sorts of things. I think there was a couple of uh, air orientated casualties, yep. but uh, the majority was probably not. Uh, there is a 24th grave uh, down at Arcadia, and that was their instructor, John Paul Riddle. I see. And, and now, what is it that you fellows do? Because I, I think you. When we're down there, we uh, lay a reef. Uh, Royal Air Force British Legion Reef with the Air Training Corps. Um, we do sort of the last post. Union Jack is uh, raised on the flagpole there. So we sort of do a sort of a last post guard of honor in remembrance. Yes. So we go there. Uh, I was doing a little research on that uh, we were talking about before yeah. and uh, uh, there's actually uh, almost a thousand British soldiers buried in the United States uh, from that era for similar uh, circumstances that they came to train not only here but they went uh, uh, in other places and of course that encompassed what you know Scotland Ireland and uh, which at that time you know everything that was UK yeah. uh, came here now and um, what's in the future for uh, the the cadet program in England you know where where are, wh where are you guys going, uh, like in the next five well, years? Our headquarters have got a big plan for 2020, where they're trying to increase the cadet numbers. I say our Royal Air Force is going down in size, as most military forces are, but the cadet program, and with the government as well, they're trying to invest more money into it and trying to raise the uh, number of cadets up to 50,000, wow. and that's just in the UK. Wow. So it's quite How a many are there now, you know? 43,000, okay. I think, so it's quite a step up. That's a sizable... Uh, uh, it's a big organisation. Yes, yes, you know. yes. And um, we get the support of the Royal Air Force. Um, we do get quite a bit of money from government, which is really neat. You know, it does certainly help. Uh, the flying um, is funded, our sort of shooting programme is funded, uh, the buildings are funded. A lot of the activities, like this camp, the cadets are self-funded, so a lot of the cadets have paid probably near on $1,200 to be here today, to be at this camp. And that's mainly the airfares and uh, the vehicle rentals and things. So it's totally self-funded, which, uh, you know, the cadets work very hard 
either on their parents to pay or raising the money themselves, working salary jobs. Yeah. Um, what I really think is really neat is the um, attitude of the cadets and also when you talk to the cadets about what they thought of the camp, they, you know, they recommend it to their friends, some of them have been before, but most of it is recommendations. You know, they go home, they talk about coming to Sun and Fun and meeting the people of Sun and Fun and it just infuses more cadets to come. Of course. This must be a great experience uh, for you guys uh, to do this and this is your first time? Yes. Yeah. Because uh, this is an unbelievable place, you know, as far as aviation is concerned, it's, um, it's, it's, it's just an amazing, uh, an amazing place. Now, talk me through uh, what are the requirements for, um, for an individual, a young man or woman, uh, to uh, participate in this or, event. Yeah, in, in the program. Uh, well, to be honest, they have to be over 16, which is uh, under the FAA rules of being on the flight line because the cadets do go out there helping out sort of direct the aircraft. So the minimum age, as far as we know, is 16, so that's sort of a good start. Um, it also gives the maturity, which we obviously need when we're on the flight line, you know, and we do treat the cadets as very much young adults. You know, we tell them to do something, we expect it to be done, and we expect them to have the common sense to, you know, basically be able to work out on the airfield and you know not get hurt right uh, obviously funding is a big issue you know trying to fund it we have funded cadets before that couldn't afford to come so we have tried to make sure that cadets all cadets have the uh, option of coming they need to get recommendation by their squadron commanders back home that they are suitable to come on this camp uh, have been on camps before where they have been away from their parents so they have to prove that um, they can stay away from their parents for over a week because uh, homesickness is a bit of an issue here. It's um, quite a long way for their parents to come yeah. to pick them up. <laughs> yes. And we have had it before many years ago. Yeah. So we know it's a problem. So we do put these things in place for good reason. And uh, it's mainly getting the recommendation. And also cadets that um, are nearing the end of their cadet career. It's sort of the cream of camps. You know, it's sort of, a, it is a little bit different. It's not the normal type of camp that we run. Um, you know, if they are interested in aviation, it is fantastic. So if they are thinking of going into the military or an aviation industry, this is where they can actually get practical experience. We go down to the workshops, they get involved in the workshops of welding, the panel beating, making the wing ribs. We do all this um, as training in the UK, but it's all very dry. You know, it's a PowerPoint presentation. This is a wing. This yeah. is a wing rib. Here, <laughs> you make a wing rib. Now you know what it looks like. You know why it's so strong, you know. Uh, the cadets go into the panel beating and they use the English wheel, which they really like. <laughs> you know, they find it quite amusing. You know, they've got an English wheel, you know, so and they make nose cones, you know. So they're actually putting, you know, all this experience into use because exactly. they've been told how it works. They know what a wing looks like. They know the shape. But here it's actually touching, doing and all the other activities here and all the other engines and everything is so available to them. Exactly. You know, and uh, so apart from sun and fun, we do take them out on trips in the second week. So we're here for two weeks, not just for sun and fun. So we take them down to the Kennedy Space Centre, you okay. know, because one of our programs back well, in the UK. Well, you're here now? Yeah, whilst we're here oh, now. So great. the second week, we go off to uh, Kennedy to see, you know, the rockets, you know, sort of, and what's going on in the space program, actually see the launch pads, you know, it just brings the theory to life. Exactly. And that's what I think sun and fun is, you know, it's sort of for our cadets, it's sort of, you know, an opportunity for hands-on experience. Exactly. Have you been able to go to the Space Center yet? We've only been here for about three days, so we haven't just stayed here mainly, mainly stay okay. stay. next week. But that's in, in that's the program. A, that, that's, that's in the works. Yes. Yeah. That is definitely a nice place. Uh, I've been there a couple of times myself. Um, now, let me ask this. I have a note here. It, it says that um, why I apply for Sun and Fun Camp. In other words, Tell me, why did you apply for to do this? Well, the main reason I applied is because it's Florida, and I've never been like out <laughs> of Europe, so <laughs> I just wanted to come to Florida and see what it's like and the weather and that. But then it's also like getting hands-on experience, like on the airfield, because we learn about it. It's like I know about the lines and what things are and what's on an airfield, but you don't really get the chance to stand on there and master the planes because it's either health and safety risks or I'm too young or stuff like that. But here, I feel like I'm trusted enough to be able to do that, and yeah. It's, 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 it's a great experience. Now, do you like it? You like oh, Florida? I love it. I love it. You like the heat? Yeah, I could do it with the heat. 
because England is not that hot, you know. No. No. I've been there, and uh, it's kind of gray skies and mist and a little bit of fog. And, um, but, it, I mean, that's not the norm, but you have that kind of weather over there. But you got very nice days over there, too. Yeah. Here, what happens is the opposite. It's most of the days are good. And then some days, like yesterday, probably experienced a lot of rain, right, uh, here. And uh, probably today, uh, the same thing. Hopefully not while the air show is going on, so we can get to. Um, uh, and uh, have you been to an air show before? No. Oh, this is your first one. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna really enjoy <laughs> this. I'll tell you, you're really gonna enjoy this, especially the night, mm. the night air show. Mm. That is, uh, to me, that's like uh, the best. Now, Anthony, I'm gonna ask you the same thing. Okay. What was the motivation to say I want to go to Stone yeah. and Fun in Florida? Similar to Samantha's really, first of all it's in Florida, <laughs> so it's again getting away from home. Um, and also, as Sir said, it's I'm coming towards the end of my cadet career. Okay. And I thought to myself, I need to do something sort of bigger and better, what can sort of finish it off and go, yeah, I've completed my cadet career. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity. Uh, again, I'm not a massive aviation geek, but I do like my aircrafts, so I'm coming out here sort of a uh, big tick in the box for me. Okay. And did anybody in your family was ever involved with the uh, flying or the RAF or? Uh? Um, I had a few sort of great great grandparents right. in the sort of the Navy and the RAF. Yeah. And I have my dad's here as well on the trip with us. Yeah. So he's sort of involved with the cadets as well. Yeah. I guess in England, everybody has a relative or far relative that was somehow involved in the military, and because. Um, Everybody had to fight to survive over there yes. uh, during the war. It wasn't you didn't like get a, a choice, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. So now, if the, um, I really would like to go over there. Uh, if you guys can tell me I can fly a Spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is probably possible. <laughs> I, I was watching a documentary the other day um, about a, an RAF pilot. I don't know if you've seen this. It's in uh, Netflix. And uh, this fellow was coming back from Germany. What this fellow used to do was to take pictures. It was a reconnaissance yes. airplane. And it was a specially designed uh, Spitfire that was set up for this. And he would fly by himself from England to Germany and France and take pictures, picture, pictures and come back. But he was he got shot, but he didn't he didn't get shot down. He made it. But of course, the plane was uh, crippled, couldn't put the landing gear down. But there was a doctor on the field that was filming this. Make a long story short, they, the, the, the grandson of the doctor investigated who was the pilot that came, and they found him. And it was an American uh, uh, pilot. And they went to his house. And on all the pretenses, you know, they were making a documentary of World War II. And in the footage, they put, and you should oh see, yeah. this man never seen this film before. And and he's watching, and all of a sudden, you see this airplane coming, and he goes, that's me. He remembered that. And then he went on to talk about the qualities of that's the Spitfire, right? which is a, just a lovely aircraft. And uh, if you don't, you were, um, you, you haven't flown a Spitfire? No. Okay. That's, uh, no. that's I think it's a select few. But there is a twin seat Spitfire at the old Royal Air Force Biggin Hill Station. So sort of a... Uh, I saw the other day some pictures about one that has just been refurbished. Yes. And uh, it's like in, in, in mint condition and in flyable conditions, uh, uh, they say. Now, uh, after Sun and Fun is finished, then I guess you people will stay here still. Yes, we're staying here for an extra week. We go for back on, uh, yeah. And that's when you're planning to um, to go to uh, the Cape, uh, Kennedy? Yep, yeah, we're off to uh, yeah, Cape Canaveral. Okay. Uh, we also take the cadets down to Bush Gardens, take them to Universal Studios, you know. It's a long way to come, so whilst we're here, we do a couple of the exactly. normal uh, UK, Florida type activities. And those are the uh, key destinations uh, in Florida. If you come to Florida and you yeah. don't go there, it's like uh, <coughs> you never did, you know. Yeah. And we also take the cadets down to the Mc 
still Air Force Base down in Tampa? That was my next question. Yes, so we go Be down there. Because I know, uh, were they this year too? Yes. Oh, great. Well, tell me about that. Tell me. Yes, we've Actually, uh, I forgot to ask him about <laughs> that. <laughs> yes, we're going down to McDill uh, on the last day of our visit, so Friday the 1st. Uh, and they've organized a program where we're going to be meeting a lot of the senior advisors from the uh, Royal Air Force, or the British military, that are based at the uh, Coalition Village and uh, Central Command. So they uh, come down and the kids, they interview or talk to the cadets and tell them, you know, sort of, other, you know, because the thing is, when you join the Royal Air Force, nobody says you can come to Florida and work. You right. know, right. So it's a bit special. Yep. So we've been in contact with the uh, British Embassy at Washington, D.C., so we've met sort of previous ca air cadets and now working there. And uh, we've got uh, ex-air cadets, um, very high-ranking air cadets, uh, down at McDill Air Force Base, working there as senior military officials, uh, working at McDill. And yeah. I Coalition remember Village last year, um, uh, you fellows did that. Mm. Now, I remember last year, I believe, I think it was last year, you guys had a chance to go in the water, I understand? Well, if you're going to so close to the water, and uh, McDill's got such a great beach, you know, it'd, be, know. it'd be a shame not to use it. That's correct. That's you know, correct. We have a lunch barbecue there, so uh, yeah, we have the way we feed the cadets, and then obviously they want to go to the base exchange, so try that out. So uh, now you made the, the you haven't gone to McDill yet this no no, no, you, no that's that's, that's in the, yes. the, the that's in the works. I remember um, uh, the last time when you came here, I believe you already had. Um, visited. Yes, our visited. program last year was uh, due to the fl flight costs. We'd sort of uh, we'd had a couple of days before Sun and Fun and a couple of days afterwards. So we'd done a few of the things we usually do at the end, at the beginning. So yes, last year was a bit sort of um, slightly different program. But uh, this year we're doing Sun and Fun and then everything else at the end. Uh, as long as you get everything accomplished, that it doesn't matter the no. order. Uh, in math, they used to say the order of the tracks does not alter the product or something like mm. that. So it doesn't matter whether it's before or after. No. But I do remember uh, the cadets were kind of excited because they went swimming. Oh, yes. Um, um, so I hope they can do that this year, too. Hopefully we'll have a nice day. Yes, sir. Make sure yeah. the swim suits yeah. and trunks. You know how that goes. Um, one of the things, uh, the, uh, I don't remember if last year... You were able to go on the high altitude chamber at MacDill? No. Okay. No, last year they got to um, fly the KC-135 simulator. Yeah. And also got, they got to um, control the refueling probe on the back. So they were uh, refueling the F-22 Raptors. It's on the simulator. I think we had one uh, smashed windscreen. So that's not too bad. That's going to be... very a lifelike. <laughs> very <laughs> lifelike. They yeah. probably got a kick out of that. Oh, they thought it's fantastic. Because yeah. that has to be something that, well, anything in a simulator, uh, especially the way the simulators are built today, you, you're in a simulator, five minutes later, you forget that you're in a simulator. Oh, yeah. This Seems is like very much, this thing. is, you know, the real deal. So I imagine they're trying to hook that thing up. And, and what was really neat is we actually went out to see the aircraft afterwards. So they actually had to crawl over a real one. And the cadets could actually see the boom. They could see where they'd been sitting. They could see the controls in the cockpit. You know, it was, you know, amazing. You know, it really was an amazing it, experience. Well, I'll tell you, it, 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 for us, it's really, it's a pleasure for, uh, for you guys to be here and to uh, be able to uh, be part of the show. And, uh, of course, I understand there's 25 more of yours, right? Oh, yes. Out so there all, over the all working at the moment, right. all volunteering. So uh, how do you do this? You draw sticks or? Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're in flights. There's three flights. We know exactly where we're going. So... Uh, it's all programmed in. Okay, Anthony, Samantha, Lieutenant Glumut. Uh, it's been a real pleasure having you here. Thank uh, you very on much. The show, and uh, for you out there, our viewers and listeners, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And my name is Diego Alfonso with the Florida Aviation Network from the Aerospace Deco Discovery at the Florida Air Museum in Lakeland, Florida, on the 41st Sun and Fun Fly-In and Exposition. We'll see you again. <laughs>